Merhaba. Here I am and I'm in a, I'm in a city called Bursa, which isn't far. It's about a three hour drive from Istanbul and it's famous for its Ottoman historical sites, for the food, and of course for the mountain which lies just behind these buildings called Mount Uludag, which I'm going to go explore today. I'm going to go hiking and maybe look around the city a little bit. Let's go. So I haven't been vlogging very much lately because I'm just a bit tired of vlogging. It's not the walking around and talking at the camera part that, that's difficult, it's the editing. It's the time I need to spend editing. I'm actually a writer and I decided to start working on a new novel and just to make a video, to walk around, film it, yak at the camera, takes a, takes a bit of energy but the time it takes to edit is really difficult. And yeah, I guess I could pay someone else to edit, but really, I'm making about $75 a month from YouTube. And I have over 130 videos, a year and a half, uh, half of my time. And I just, I just, it's not sustainable to make this a viable career option. If I wanted to really make, you know, thousands of dollars a month, I'd have to really change my strategy and not just do walking around hanging out with Tony videos. Cause those aren't gonna get viral, go big enough, you know, something I have to make them really, really specific and interesting. And I just don't know if I have the time or energy to do that. So I might be scaling back my videos after Turkey because I need to focus on the things that will advance my career, advance my path in the world and making YouTube videos, travel videos, it's just too crowded of a niche. Even in Bursa, if you look up Bursa, you're gonna see 27 other vloggers that have already been here and covered everything to do in Bursa. That's why my video is a bit different. I'm just walking around, hanging out, rather than showing you the top 10 things to do. Even though that's probably what would get a lot more views on YouTube. What's this? Looks like a, mo a mosque. I really think Bursa is such a diverse and interesting city. If you look over here, we have these these communist style mega rises, like something out of a science fiction movie, just rows of them. Can you imagine living up there? I, I would love to see the insides of these buildings. And then if you just go around the corner here, we have these, I don't know, hun hundreds of years old, this style, whatever this style is, this romantic looking colorful Turkish home just on the same block. And just over the next road, we go into the old town. Bursa is incredibly diverse and varied. Like you go from one corner to the next and, and it switches from a modern area with shopping malls to an ancient looking bazaar. It's really, really cool. What is this? What is this called? I don't know what it's called. Do you understand? Bamya. 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 Tell me what Bamya is. Artichokes, yeah, these are what the artichokes here look like. Green, some kind of bean. It's a little bit like time travel, isn't it? Oh, and there goes the mosque. <laughs> Maybe we'll get ourselves a kilo of strawberries. One kilo is 25. Okay, one kilo. 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 One
Yeah. One kilo, please. Yeah. <laughs> Look at these beautiful strawberries. So one kilo is about less than two euros. So if you want to know how much fruits and vegetables cost, that's <laughs> that's like a dollar fifty right there. Dollar fifty US, a dollar fifty euro. And you can see the price here. Cherries. 20, 20 lira for a kilo. Cherries. Merhaba. Olives are a bit more. These are some some high quality olives. And nuts. You're never going to run out of nuts in Bursa. What the hell am I going to do with all these strawberries? I'm walking around all day with strawberries in my bag. I can't eat them all. Here are the men in Turkey, they love playing uh, backgammon. Backgammon! Most of the cafeterias are places for men it seems. They love to sit outside, smoke, play cards, play backgammon and drink tea. Already the scenery has changed and we're here in one of the main shopping districts near the old town. You can see some delicious uh, delights, some treats. One of the things I really like about Bursa is nobody is hollering at me. Nobody's like, my friend, my friend. And, and most of the things, most of the products I've purchased, no one tried to rip me off. Nobody inflated the price 10 times, the value. It's a very authentic city. I don't see any any tourists, any foreign tourists here other than um, the odd tourist here or there. But I think there's a lot more Arabic tourists than there are European here in Bursa. And this looks like the bazaar in a very, very old building. Let's go look at the bazaar. You can see they have everything a traveler might need. Luggage, purses, jewelry. Gold. Traditionally, Bursa was a hub of the, of the Silk Road. The famous road where silk was shipped all across Europe and down into Africa and everywhere else in the world. And Bursa was one of the main producers of silk. You can still go and see the traditional silk refineries where they make silk, they refine silk by hand and make rugs and blankets and all sorts of clothing from straight off the worm, straight out of the worm's butt. Bursa is also famous for towels. For some reason, I don't know why, but hand towels are a big thing here in Bursa. Merhaba. Hello. Hello. Merhaba, hoş geldin Türkiye. <laughs> you make hand towels. You sell towels. Made in Bursa. Made in Bursa. Bursa. Made in Bursa. Not Made in Bursa. Not in Istanbul. Havlu <laughs> mafi. Look at Istanbul, güzel şehir. Istanbul shit compared to the Bursa. Very good Istanbul. Ama havlu da da Bursa very good. Sen ne dersin? Look at the designs on here. It's a uh, Beautiful towels. If you if you need some towels, Bursa is the place to come. And you can come to this guy's shop right here. Hunkar Havlu. And here we have the Grand Mosque. The Grand Mosque of Bursa. And it was built in 1399. Think about the, how old that is. That's older than your grandma's 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 grandma grandma. 
Always make sure you take your shoes off before you go into a mosque or you're going to get in a lot of trouble. It's prayer time. It's prayer time. Normally the Grand Mosque is open to tourists, but when they're praying, if you're not a Muslim who's going in to pray, you really shouldn't be in there, and they make that well known. This is the most famous dish. It's from Bursa. It's called the Iskender. And what it is, it's a kebab. And then they put bread underneath it. They put the meat on top. They put some tomato sauce on it, and then they cover it in melted butter. Yeah. And that is the most famous dish here. I had it yesterday, so I'm not having it right now. I don't need to eat. I'm a bit fat. Look at these streets. They look like a place the tourists should be hanging out, but yet there are no tourists, just locals. Hey, can I look? It's like going back in time. They still have these shops just selling spices, teas. Yeah. And it really, really smells fantastic in here. We have some cloves. One of the most important dishes in Turkey is korba, which basically means soup and you find korba houses all over turkey where people come to just have a have a nice lunch and you can see the different dishes that they they have in these korba houses here you can see a wall that is very very old it was probably built originally by the Roman Empire and rebuilt by the Byzantines and then rebuilt by the Ottomans and when everything collapses it'll probably be rebuilt by apocalyptic motorcycle driving wasteland uh, warrior tribes and look if you want to get up here you can even take an escalator Bursa city of the future here's a better look at the the Grand Mosque Okay, here's a question. How do you go number two without dropping your clothes on the ground or getting your excrement on your clothes? Do you just wrap your shorts around your knees? Or do you put them at your ankles or do you just get totally naked so that you can use the toilet? I don't understand. I got a front row seat. Kalia. It's uh, about four or five kilometers away, and that's where I'm gonna go hiking. So the bus driver dropped me off up on top of this hill here uh, <laughs> in Inkara and he, and they were like, the people on the bus were like, there's no hiking up here. If you want to go hiking, you have to go 28 kilometers further into the forest and you're probably going to die if you do that. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but I just got a coffee here at this, this nice cafe. There's quite a nice view up here. There's the view looking down into Bursa, but I was hoping there were some trails or hiking or something in here. So apparently according to my All Trails app, there are all kinds of trails, look at them all. Just everywhere here, but 
nothing near me. I have to walk for miles to get to the beginning of the trail. There's somewhere up over that hill. This is why you need, when you ask locals for directions or advice on where to go, you need specific directions. If someone just says, go to this town, there's great hiking, get your GPS out and get them to put a pinpoint exactly where you need to end up in order to start your adventure. Otherwise, you end up on a wild sheep chase up in the mountains of Turkey. I found a local. He's giving me directions. It's very cold. Do you like Bursa? I like because I live in Bursa. You love Bursa? Yeah, I live in Bursa. Mm -hmm. Bursa is good. Have woods and the hot. Mm -hmm. Canada, very, very cold. <laughs> Uh, this is the local man from Bursa and he's teaching me everything and he says you can go into the woods But you got to watch out for the dogs Vicious dogs dangerous dogs <laughs> Why are the dangerous dogs in the forest in woods in the woods? <laughs> okay, I'll bring a stick Hit the dogs with the stick. You have a stick. I'll find a stick Already I found one of the dangerous dogs look at him. He looks like Cujo and he has a spiked collar a chunk of fresh meat. <laughs> but I think he's a good boy. What a what a beast. All right, so there's dangerous dogs in the forest. Let's go check it out. Well, there's the forest, but this is a military base. You can see a pillbox there. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go hiking in the in the military base. I uh, said somewhere down this road I would find a park, so let's go. What have I gotten myself into? Look where I am. So apparently the park is down here 300 meters. Down this, this crazy road with no walking space. Let's see if we can make it there alive. Okay. I took the trail. It doesn't seem like a rustic park at all. It seems like someone's driveway. Here we go. Well, it looks like I found a park. It looks like a camping spot. Whoa, there's one of the dangerous dogs. Yeah, there's huge dogs with spiked collars all over the place. What the hell? He says it's actually five, five Turkish liras to walk in the park, which is not very much. So why not? And a ticket. The five Turkish liras. It's a nice quiet place. It's uh, your family? Or you work here, or is it family? I am work here. Okay. I am students. Student. Yeah, I am computer engineer in my department. Oh, okay. Karavik University. And what's your name? My Emre. Emre, Tony. Nice to meet Tony. Okay, I'm gonna go explore now. What? I go look now. Explore. This word explore, it's um, in Turkish. How do I say explore? Keshuf. Keshuf. Okay. I know. I keshuf. Okay. Bye. Have a good day. Well, this is more of what I wanted. It's not quite what I wanted. I wanted to go. I wanted to do some proper forest trekking, but I'll do for walking around in a park. So here you can see they have some benches and fire pits. And if you're in the city in Bursa and you want to come out to nature, you can come out to this uh, campground, bring your family, get a gazebo. We have lots of places like this in Canada as well. Looks like they're making some kind of monument out of pine cones here. So it's just one kilometer down this medieval trail to the ancient historical village. Uh, that sounds like an okay adventure. What do you say? Let's go. Good dog. Why are they wearing those collars, huh? Keshvet Mech, Keshvet Mech. Everybody's going Keshvet Mech, Keshvet Mech. And here we are at the entrance to Inkaya, which apparently is a historical place. It looks quite wealthy to me. 
And this is the car I see everywhere. It's a Pia. What's it called? A Fiat. I'm in paradise. Let's get a closer look at this tree. Here's one of the, the giant hounds of Inkara. It's a very, very big tree. And he's 610 years old. 600! I'm starting to get the feeling that the women don't want to be photographed or videotaped because every time I swing the camera past, they hide their face and run away. So I could Google that, but let me know in the comments before I offend everybody in Turkey. Kaya, okay, here we are. Hola, hi. Here I am back at the entrance to Inkaya. I guess I'll head back down into Bursa now. I'll catch a bus here. Found a place that students like to hang out. Os, Os Anli. So I think this is a good place to have a coffee and a good place to end my video. Bye bye or uh, gula gula, as someone might reply to that here in Turkey.